Welcome to Abundant Life Church. I'm excited that you're here. Are you excited? Yes. About five of you are excited. Hey, I'm glad at least five of you are excited. We're going to have a great time this morning worshiping the Lord. We want to welcome all those who are online. We're so excited that you're part of the family and that you join us each week. Uh, we know a lot of you can't get out of your home. Some of you live far away, and we're glad that you call Abundant Life Church your family home your church home, and we're glad that you join us each week. Let's be part of our worship today for everyone sitting in the sanctuary or watching online. We want you to worship Jesus. I am so excited about what God has done. How many of you have been blessed this week? Amen. God is so good. It's so fun to watch how God just he does things at times that you just don't even realize it. And then you look back and go, what a blessing that was. And you know, in Revelations chapter uh, 12, we've been talking about this verse, that we overcome by the word of our testimony. What is your testimony this morning? Is your testimony overcoming? Is your testimony that God has done great things in your life? It needs to be. We're going to make some confessions this morning. So if you look at the board, Jonathan... It's online for those of you who are watching online. Make the confessions with us. Join me. Say this with us and put some enthusiasm in your heart. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I was chosen before the creation of the world. I have been gloriously saved by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. God has given me a purpose. I am alive in Christ Jesus. God has given me peace and joy. God has made me to be a living temple for him. God's power works through me. God has caused me to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. Jesus is ever interceding for me to overcome. Holy Spirit is also interceding for me. I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I will give him praise for all he has done. I adore my Father in heaven. I worship God Almighty, Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai. I will bless your Father, God. I shout praises to you. Say it with me loudly. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand with me. Father, I thank you that we confess the word. And Lord, as we make those confessions, those words are being just uh, tattooed on our heart, Father. But I don't know what, else, what other word to use, but we want those words to be engrafted into our hearts. Father, we love you this morning and we praise you and we give you glory. Holy Spirit. Take us into the presence of our Father this morning. Holy Spirit, come. Teach us. Jesus said that he would send us a comforter. And Holy Spirit, you're the comforter. And there are people this morning that need their heart comforted. There are people this morning that need wisdom and understanding. And Holy Spirit, those are attributes that are in your life, that are in your character, and you give them to us. We pray this morning, Holy Spirit, that you will be with us, that you will comfort us. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Jesus, thank you for the blood that you shed for us. Oh, we just worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Father, thank you. Sir, we bow our heart before you. We bow our heart in your presence and we give you glory we adore you Lord we give you our adoration that moment in time when everything else stops and it's just you and us nothing else matters Father we want to know you this morning fresh and new Refresh us, revive us. Father, we thank you for it. We honor you today. We 
give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Give him praise this morning. Tell him how much you love him. Father, we love you. We praise you, God. Thank you, sir. Thank you for loving us. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Let's lift up the name of Jesus.
sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he.
As I was listening to that song, there's that one phrase that you call me deeper still. You know, one of the things that I just was sensing as I was, we were singing that is that the Lord always calls us into a place of depth in Him. In fact, I believe it was Ezekiel who had the dream, saw the vision of the water coming out of the throne, out of the temple. And it came out ankle deep. Then it got deeper, like knee deep, and then waist deep. Before long, you had to swim. And I believe what God is saying to this house is that I'm calling you deeper. Deeper, deeper. And this is how you know Listen, watch this. Thank you, Lord. So many times in our life, we're driven by our emotions, by what we feel. Well, I don't feel much. I don't. Listen, God doesn't care about how you feel. Faith is a decision that I'm going deeper. I can stand at the side of the pool all day long and look at the water and go, I just don't feel it. I just don't feel like, I don't know, I just, it might be cold. It comes to that that point where we make a decision. I'm diving in. And we dive in. And it doesn't matter the cold. It doesn't matter the heat. It doesn't matter the depth. We make the decision, I'm going in. And I'm going to give it all. And I believe that's what God is saying to Abundant Life Church this year. As he is exposing to us more and more the depth of his love. If we follow our emotions, our feelings, we'll never experience the depth of his love because his love is not emotional his love is not feelings his love is it's just there because that's who he is is the very essence of him is love so if i'm gonna know god i can't look to my feelings. well i just don't feel like that this morning or i don't it doesn't matter what i feel by faith i know that God loves me. And and that one line in that song, it says, I am pleased with you. And I think about that. And you know, a few months ago, I quit saying to my children, I'm proud of you. Because proud is an emotion. Proud is a, you know, the Bible says, don't be proud. And the father never looked at Jesus and said, I'm proud of you. He looked at Jesus and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. See, that's a comment of love. I'm pleased with you. Proud is a a, a boasting of my feelings. Love, I'm pleased with who you are. Even in your failures, even in your inadequacies, even in your strife, your struggles, says, I'm pleased with you. I love you. And I believe this year that God is saying, come deep with me. Come deep. That's what we've been teaching all year. I've built a bridge. Love will build a bridge. Love will build a bridge over every obstacle that stands in your way. It's his love. As we sang that, he's a good, good father. He is a good father. 
And he does love you. And he's pleased with you that you've accepted Jesus, that you've been born again, and that you receive his love. He's pleased with you. So don't get your emotions and your feeling caught up in the way. Just know God is pleased with you and he loves you. Receive that this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now give somebody a hug close to you. Let the love that you have in you pour out of you. Pour out of you. While we're, while we're coming out of worship, as we're coming out of worship, we're going to pray for people who need to be saved. So I don't, I don't want you moving around a whole lot. I want you to listen now. We're going to pray for people who need to be saved. Every Sunday of this month, we're putting prayer requests up here, and I've asked you to do at least two. And if you were not here last Sunday and you've not put names of people up here to be prayed for, then I want you to just raise your hand because we've got prayer request forms for you to put two people down. The Lord is really impressed in my heart that we need to be praying for people to be saved. So if you've not put anybody down, raise your hand and the ushers will get you this form. If you have put people down and you have more people Raise your hand. Here's what I believe God is saying. Here's some up here, guys. Here's what I believe God is saying. We are in a moment of time for this house where God is hearing our prayers and people will be saved. There's some over here. Guys, get these forms out. Some up here. They may need pens. Get your names down on here. And after you get your names down, just come and lay them up here on the altar. They're going to be here all month long. Now, we also have a form that we gave you, a prayer that is taken strictly from the Word. Everything in here. In fact, on the bottom of this, there's scriptures that I want you to research because it will show you where this prayer came from. Everything in this prayer is based on the Word. And how many of you know that God's word will not return void? And when we pray his word, he is in agreement with it already. And so it's a done deal. And when two of us agree as touching anything on this earth, it's done. So what scripture says. So as we pray over people this morning, so as you write those names down, after you get them wrote down, just bring them and lay them on the altar up here. And I'm going to ask the leaders to come back and we're going to pray over these again. Leaders, I need you to come. Elders, come and let's lay hands on these prayer requests. And we're going to pray. I want you to join me. Now, we did this last week. As you get your prayer request done, if you're online and you have people that you want prayed for, type their names in and we'll get them on a piece of paper. We'll get them up here. So if you get, well, I'm going to give you a moment to bring your names up and lay them on the altar. Come on, Pastor. Let's pray over these. We're going to pray a prayer, and the prayer will be on the board. I want you to pray it with me, specifically. Put your heart into it. Put your faith into it, because we're going to agree with the word. Amen? So come on, if you've got names, go ahead and bring them up. We're going to wait for a moment. We're going to wait for a moment, and then we're going to pray this prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Come ahead. Lay them on the altar. Go ahead. We'll wait on you online as you write, send your names in. We're getting them on paper right now. And here's what I believe. That in the month of March, you're going to see these people come to Jesus. In the month of March, you are going to see these people's lives turn around for Jesus. Because we're in agreement. We're in agreement that God is saving these people. We know it's his desires to save the lost. Amen. Jonathan, are you getting names? Okay. 
God, let's, let's say this prayer. Stretch your hands towards the prayer request. And when we come where it's empty, put the name of the person you're praying for, put their name in there. So let's pray. Father, I come before you in prayer and in faith, believing your word says you desire all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So I bring, put their name, before you this day. I break the power of Satan from his assignments and activity in, call their name, life in the name of Jesus. Now while Satan is bound, I ask that you send forth the perfect laborers to share the good news of the gospel in such a way that will listen and understand it. As the truth is ministered, I believe Bob will open his eyes to the gospel, come out of the snare of the devil, and make Jesus Lord. Father, I ask you to fill Deborah with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. As I intercede in her behalf, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is activated. And from this moment on, I pray and thank you for their salvation. I am confident that you are alert and active, watching over your word to perform it. It will not return to you void. It will accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where, whereof it was sent. Therefore, my confession of faith is, God has begun a good work in Bob's life, and he will perform it and bring it to full completion until the day of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. And then there's the scriptures. So, Father, I thank you this morning as we have prayed and agreed that these people are coming to the knowledge of Jesus. Not coming. Lord, they've already come. We receive it in Jesus' name. And we worship you. And we praise you. And we thank you that their lives are changed. Lord, that you are doing miracles in their hearts today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And if you agree, I want you to shout, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, this week, I want you to take this prayer. And if you don't have a copy, lift your hands. The ushers will get you one. Take this prayer. It's the same prayer we just prayed. Hang it on your refrigerator. Hang it in the bathroom, wherever. Put it in your war room, wherever you pray. Take this and pray over those people, declaring that they are saved in Jesus' name. Because I know that God is doing a great work today. Amen? And you may be sitting there and it just hit my spirit. Somebody sat there thinking, I've been praying for years for this person. And they haven't got saved yet. Get that thought out of your mind. Don't think it again. Because that gets you into doubt and fear. But when you see them, when you think of them, thank God that they're saved. Give him praise that they've already been won into the kingdom of God. That they've already come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Because that's what God is doing today. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. All right, let me give you a few announcements. Wednesday night, Bible study, 6.30. Thursday night, we have the men's recovery group at 7. Friday night, we have prayer at 7. This coming Saturday, from 9 to, well, 9.30 to 1.30, 2 o'clock, we're having an all-church cleaning day. And we're going to be working a lot outside. So if you have um, anything that works outside, clippers, uh, weed eaters, all that kind of stuff, bring them, and we're just going hit to hit this outside. we got a few things to do on the inside, but we're getting ready for Easter. We're getting ready for our outreach. And so uh, get ready. Come Saturday, 
and we'll have a great time and a great fellowship. We did this a week ago. We had about 15 people showed up. We got a lot done. And I need some of you that hardly ever come. I need you to come and be involved and help. It's a great fellowship time. We'll pair you up with somebody that you don't hang out with ever. And, and we'll just let you become friends. And it'll be a good time. 9.30. We'll serve lunch. We'll order pizza in or something. But we'll serve lunch and have a good time of fellowship. Amen. Amen. You want to talk about Easter? Come on. We have our Easter outreach coming, and we are, what, 30 days, not 30, we're uh, 28 days away, 27, four weeks from yesterday. Yeah, it's exciting. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Good. Aren't you glad that you came and we could fellowship together this morning in the house of God? Amen. 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 I like to fellowship with the brethren. That's what the word says, right? The brethren. <laughs> so we come together and we fellowship together. I'm thinking about how every day, you know, I have my time with God and my fellowship with God every day. But when we come together, wow, what an impacting moment Amen. for my spirit. Amen. It is for me. I hope it is for you. Amen. You know, when we come together and we just exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Man, you come in and you get stirred up to go out and do ministry. That's, that's our job, right? That's what Pastor Elihu's job is and Pastor Dusty's job and Brenda's job and my job is to equip the saints Amen. for the work of ministry, right? So when you come in here and we equip you, we expect you to go out and do work of ministry because now you're full. Amen? That's not what you asked me to do, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> you're all right. That's a good word. Go ahead. All right. Good okay. word. Easter outreach, so this kind of all goes together, because when you're full, then you can give out, right? So Easter outreach is coming, and we've got a lot of things planned. The number one thing that we have to do right now is fill those eggs back there. So, um, Tom, is that how I had those? Can we swap those around? Um, those eggs that are in the back that are in the bag, yeah, that one, those are empty. Those eggs need to be filled. So please, please, please take those eggs and fill them up and bring them back and put it in the other. We just swap those right around. Thank you. So the um, other bag, the other one is all full. Already full. So uh -huh. we already have a bunch that are full. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so the, the, bags that, the eggs that are in the bags are not full. So either you take them and fill them or bring us some candy because we have a lot of people that will help us fill. So... Um, we have three, about 3,500 3, eggs total, so we really need help filling them. Okay, so that, that's the number one thing. Anything else that I need to say about that? Well, it's really simple. If somebody goes out to Walmart and picks up one of those great big bags of candy, they're about $14, <laughs> and there's about 400 pieces of candy in them. Yeah. And if, if uh, 10 of us did that, we're done. Yeah, sure. And um, <laughs> you bought two of those yesterday, and so yeah. we're taking about 600 of those, and so... It's already a bunch done, so uh -huh. jump in there, grab so a everybody bunch. Everybody will just help. We'll get it all done quickly. Amen. The key thing is going to be filling them, but we've got to get all that done. Yeah. And so fill, fill, fill. And then you have a meeting uh, about the Easter outreach next Sunday. Yeah, next Sunday. We'll have another meeting next Sunday to really talk about everything that we're doing. And um, I, I thank you for those of you that have already said that you would help and you're supporting what we're doing already. Um, that now it's time to get busy and get to work. So we're going to collaborate with Leela and myself, and we'll come together and we'll share on the details of all, all of our outreach. I'm excited about this outreach because we're really reaching out to this area right here, this community. And so th you need to be praying for this outreach. It needs to be impacting outreach. And, and one of our thrusts for this outreach is the Spanish-speaking community. And so we're reaching out so that we can see salvations in the Spanish-speaking community. That really is our goal. We've done this two years in a row. 500 people come. We've not seen a salvation. So this year, our prayer is salvation. And it's, yeah. And part of that was our fault. Yeah. Because we didn't realize the diversity in the community. And so we weren't prepared to do the outreach in English and in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so the, the people who spoke Spanish came and got eggs and got presents and got hot dogs and went home. Because we could, we didn't, we we weren't prepared. This year we're prepared. Right. 
We're going to be in both languages. Uh, we're going we're gonna to speak in Spanish and translate back to English. And so um, uh, we're going to do actually about a five-minute teaching before we do the Easter egg hunt. We're going to invite people to church. We, we, we're doing things a little different this year. And we need a lot of help. And so um, March 31st, how many of you, raise your hand if you're willing to help. I need to see hands of people who will say, I will be involved in this outreach. All right, here's the deal. God sees your hand, and if you raised your hand, I expect you at that meeting next Sunday to know what you're going to be doing. Amen. So you are now drafted. Amen. And one, one more thing. Uh, next week, I will also have a short meeting with those of you that have kids that are wanting to go to camp, to youth camp, kids camp, junior camp. So I'm telling you now so you're prepared for next week's meeting. Okay? Is that all? Let's take our offering. Are you ready to give? I got, I've got to share this with you. You know, we've been, I, I've been teaching you on, the last two weeks I've been teaching on the subject of um, managing or overcoming. And a lot of times in our, in our walk with God, we try to manage our walk with God instead of overcoming. And I'm going to continue that today, but you know, that also works in our finances. And a lot of times we try to manage our finances rather than hear what God says. Listen, this is what they used to tell me. If God can get a hold of your wallet, God can get a hold of your heart. Because how many know your, your, your wallet and your heart are kind of connected? And if God can get a hold of your wallet, in other words, if God says to you, I need you to give this amount, you don't go, but, 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 you just go, yes, sir. And that's the desire of God. And it's not because he wants to take from you. Uh, you know, I, I want to share this testimony because, you know, I, I, I believe Revelation says that you overcome by the word of your testimony. And uh, Teresa and I have been very faithful in our giving and in our tithing and, and, uh, and, and just sowing seed. We're constantly sowing seed. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, there are times I'll come home, we'll go grocery shopping. I'll come home the next day and half the food's gone. I'm like, what happened to our food? She gave it all away. You know, and she just, she just constantly gives, and she's done that all of our married life. Well, we have a, we have a, a bill that we pay every month, and um, we got the monthly statement in the other day, and uh, we made our monthly payment on it, and underneath the payment, there was another payment, and on it, it said gift, $1,000. We don't even know where it came from. Somebody paid $1,000 on a deal that we're paying off. And it put us that much closer to getting it paid off. We have no idea where it came. It's just all it said, gift. Now, now I don't tell you that to, to brag about that, I, not to brag about us. I tell you that to brag about what God's doing because we've been faithful. And we've sown seed and we've sown seed and we've sown seed. And, and at the time you don't even realize it, harvest comes. It just shows up. And we give glory to God. I told you this last Sunday. I'm going I'm to tell you this again. Giving God praise is so important. The children of Israel came out of Egypt, crossed over the Red Sea, and they worshiped God. I mean, they celebrated in, in Exodus chapter 15. You see it. Moses and the men danced and got crazy. Miriam, Moses' sister, took the women and with the timbrel and the dance. They partied. And celebrated God's deliverance from the, from, the, from the Egyptian army. Do you realize that's the last time in the history of the children of Israel in the 40 years in the wilderness that it says they celebrated God? When we celebrate what God's done in our life, we set ourselves up for the next blessing. Too many times we keep celebrating. We stop celebrating. And I want this church to be known as a celebrator of what God has done. Amen. Amen? Amen? Let me ask you this question. How many of you know that God has blessed you greatly? Amen? Amen? So as you give this morning, I want you to realize 
that as you give, you are setting yourself up for the next celebration. Amen? And when it comes, I want you to celebrate. I don't want you to go, oh, this was really nice. I want you to celebrate. Amen? Philippians chapter 4 says this. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. How many believe that he'll supply all your needs? Amen? Amen. 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 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10 says this, or verse 6. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that you always having all sufficiency in everything may have an abundance in every good deed. How many of you need an abundance? You ready for the abundance? God's teaching you how to walk in abundance right here. As it is written, he scattereth abroad, he give to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, and he supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So all this is about you sowing and reaping. And God wants to bless you, but you've got to give him something to bless. Amen? So this morning, I want you to bless God so he can get ready to bless you. Ushers, come on. And if you're watching online, go right there on Facebook. Hit shop now. We want you to give and be a part of this. Or you can go to the webpage, alife.com, alife.com, alife.church, alife.church, and go under give. Now, it's not life.church, it's a life. Make sure you get that. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom and to bless you and to honor you. And Father, I give you praise this morning. For the opportunity that you give us to bless. And so this morning, Father, as we sow into your kingdom, I thank you that we are setting ourselves up for great blessings. I honor you, God. And I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Listen, when God blesses you, I want you to come tell us. I want you to share it with the church. I want you to let them know, hey, look, this is what God's done. This is where God has blessed me. It doesn't matter the amount. When God blesses you, let us know. Hey, I also want to let you know, this is income tax time. And when you get those big returns, make sure you tithe. A lot of people get income tax and forget God. Don't do that. Bless God in your income tax, too. Amen? Amen? Amen. Middle school kids, follow Pastor Teresa back there. Go to your class. Have a good time. Sixth through eighth grade. Amen. Grab your Bibles. Let's go. Now, I'm going to pick up where we left off last week and just continue on that theme of, of just thinking about that God love will build a bridge to overcome. And I gave you the thought that too many times in our life we manage our Christianity rather than overcoming the issues of our life. Let's give an example. Somebody who has a bad temper. My father used to tell this story as a kid as I was growing up. There was a husband and wife, and both of them had this really bad temper, and they both blew up. And so they, they made this code between the two of them that if one of them had a really bad day, they would, they would do something so when the other person saw them, they would know, I've had a bad day, so let's work together to, to help me stay calm. And her... her um, uh, signal 
was she would take the corner of her apron and she would tuck it into the tie, into the, into the tie. So if he walked in and he saw the corner of her apron tucked in, he knew she'd had a bad day. And so he had to help her through it so she didn't blow up. So his was if he came home and he had his hat on backwards, she knew he had had a bad day. So that went along really, really good until one day she, he came home from work and he's got his hat on backwards and she's got her apron tucked in. And the managing of their anger was out the door. Because he couldn't help her and she couldn't help him because they were both in a bad place. When we're managing our Christianity or managing the issues of our life, we will fail. We will fall. The only way that we're going to be able to take the situations in our life and overcome them is by the pattern that I've set before you the last two weeks. So I'm going to rehearse the last two week scriptures, and I hope you take some notes and write these down. The first week, I gave you four steps that will help you overcome instead of manage. And I'm just going to give them to you real quick, so those who weren't here, you can write them down, and if you, uh, uh, you can go back and watch them online. The four steps are this. The first one is watch what you speak. You've got to watch what you speak. According to Proverbs 18, 21, and Revelations 12, verses 10 and 11, you've got to watch what you speak. And, and I told the church, I told Wednesday night Bible study this. Teresa and I were, um, Brendan, David, and Teresa and I went to a deal last Sunday night, a, a minister's deal. And one of the speakers was standing up there, and this is what they said. Uh, in the middle of their talking, they, they stumbled over their words. Have you ever stumbled over your words? And this is what the person said. I can't talk tonight. And, and I reached over to Teresa and I said, do you see that? She's like, what? She doesn't even realize what she said. She just said, I can't talk tonight. Well, that's not true. She can talk. She was talking. She just stumbled over her words. Pastor, you're being picky. Yes, I am. Because the word says to watch what you speak. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Right? So I'm showing you, first thing you've got to do is watch what you speak. Too many times we say things that we don't even know we're saying. How many of you have been watching your words lately? Nobody's watching their words. All right, church, that's why I'm on this three weeks now. <laughs> third week, I've been, this is the third week I'm teaching this. I'm going to stay on it till you get it. Watch your words. Watch what you speak. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Deuteronomy says this, heaven and earth records against you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your seed may live. Listen, if you're not careful what you say, you not only affect you, but you're affecting the generations to come. Now, if you knew you were affecting the generations to come, would you watch what you're saying? Well, you are. So you've got to be careful what comes out of your mouth. And I was sharing this with Teresa the other day. I, I said, as adults, if our children say certain things, we're on them. I, we don't talk that way. No, no, you don't talk that way. No, 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 no. That's not allowed in this house. Anybody ever done that with their kids? Are you awake? Do we need to do some jumping jacks? Have you ever done that with your kids? We don't talk that way. Who do you think they learned it from? Your kids are going to speak the way you speak. And if your kids are saying things that you don't like, you better stop and listen to what you're saying because they're learning it from you. And don't give me, well, they're learning it from school. They're with you more than they are school. you got to watch what you say. That was the first step. Second step was this. The time you put into the word. The time we put into the word. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. John 15, verse 4 and 7. Romans 12, 2. All scriptures that talk about the word. 
that's inside of us. The word that's inside of us. The third thing that we talked about is what we do at the cross of Jesus. Whether we allow the issues in our life to come to death or whether we're going to try to manage them. And too many times we try to manage them whether, instead of allowing Jesus to bring them to death. How many of you know Jesus has already died for all of your issues? It's already done. But we have to appropriate the cross. We have to appropriate the blood. We have to take the issue of our life and submit it to the death of Jesus Christ and let that issue come to death in our life. We have to do that. If we don't do that, we're just spinning our wheels. We're like a big old monster truck stuck in mud, and we're just flinging mud everywhere, accomplishing nothing but making a mess. And there's a lot of Christians making lots of messes and going nowhere. You ever felt like you're just stuck? Man, Lord, I wish I could go somewhere. I wish I could accomplish something. What are you doing at the cross? The fourth thing that we talk about was being thankful, giving thanks. Psalms 34.1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen? How many of you bless the Lord at all times? All times. All times. Wake up in the morning. How many of you are morning people? How many of you are not morning people? You are the ones that need to practice this the most. Because I know in the morning I get up and I'm, I'm just, I'm up. I'm ready to go. It doesn't matter what time the alarm. If the alarm goes up, I'm out of bed. I'm ready to go. And I'm smiling and I'm moving. In my house, I don't talk to anybody. Not because of me, but because of all of them. Good morning. Ugh. The bear's out. <laughs> We should never be that way. Give thanks at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. You want me to praise God in the morning? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to praise God in the morning. That's, that's for you. That's for you. That's for you. I saw you raise your hand. That's praise God in the morning. We need to do that. So those are the four things that I gave you the first week. Last week, I gave you this. We went deeper into the Word, and I gave you three things that you need to do in the Word. The first one is meditate on the Word. Meditate on the Word. It's like the cow that chews its cud. The cow has four stomachs. It takes the food in. It chews it. It swallows it. It throws it up into its mouth, chews it again, swallows it into the second stomach, throws it up again, chews it some more, swallows it into the third stomach, throws it back up, chews it some more, throw, takes it down into the fourth stomach. We need to become cud eaters of the word. Meditating on the word is what the word says in Joshua 1.8. It says, I'll not allow the law of the Lord to depart from my mind. Constantly speaking the word. Constantly. How do I meditate on the word? The Lord, the creator of the universe, the lover of my soul, he is everything. The Lord, the Lord is, he is, is. That's a two-letter word, but it's powerful. It has an action to it. The Lord is my, mine, shepherd. What's a shepherd do? The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd keeps me safe. He causes me to lie be by green pastures. He leads me to still waters. So you're meditating on the word. You're meditating on the word. You're devouring the word. And that's the first step that you've got to do if you're going to overcome when it comes to the word. The second thing is practice the word. James 1.22 says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. There's a lot of Christians that are hearing the word but are not doing the word. And you say, that's kind of judgmental. No, it's not judgmental. It's just fact. Because you see the fruit of it in your life. I get calls from people all the time. Pastor, I need this. Pastor, I... are you doing the word? Now, I'll counsel with anybody. I'll pray with anybody. That's not a problem at all. But sometimes 
If you'll do the word, you don't need someone to pray for you. You've already done it. Practice the word. The third thing is, give the word first place. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. So if you don't have all those notes, if you didn't get all those scriptures, you can go online and watch the last two services. And if you send me an email, I'll send you a copy of all those scriptures. Today, I want to take it a step further. And I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 40. And I want to look at some things. Let me, let me ask you this. How many of you need to be strengthened in the Lord? Nobody? Okay, let's go home. <laughs> I said, how many of you need to be strengthened? Nobody moved. If you're all good, let's go home. <laughs> if, how many of you need to be strengthened in the Lord? I'm going to teach you. Now, 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 listen. What I've taught you the last two weeks are the foundation of what you need. You can't take what I'm going to teach you today and apply it if you don't apply the word. Okay? It's like, it's like taking a, a, a puzzle that's all Oreos. Have you ever seen one of those puzzles that's like one color? I had a friend of mine that had a puzzle one time that was just a bunch of Oreos. Just a picture of Oreos. And they had to put it together. First of all, to put a picture together of Oreos is stupid because you're getting hungry the whole time you're putting it together. <laughs> but they're putting all this picture to. How many of you know one Oreo looks just like the other Oreo? And when you're trying to put pieces together, you're going to miss things. Church, we're going to miss things if we don't do the foundational things first. If we don't apply what I've taught the last two weeks, what I'm going to teach you today will just... Will, will, will become just like the seed the, the, the Jesus talked about the seed and the sower where the seed falls on the ground. You get excited about it, but it's on, it's on hard ground and the birds come and eat it up and it's gone and you receive nothing from it. I don't want you to be that way. Apply what I've taught the first two weeks. Getting into the word. Begin to devour the word. That one scripture in Proverbs says, attain, uh, attend yourself to the word. Pay attention to the word. Watch the word. Know the word. It's what it's talking about. So today we're going to look at, at, at Isaiah. And I want you to think about some things here about how to gain strength. We're going to look at Isaiah 40 starting in verse 28. Do you not know? See, God, this is God's talking. He's asking you some questions. So I want you to think about it. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth. Watch this. He's trying to get a point across. Because he's not just saying God. I mean, he's, he's, he's trying to deliver a punch here. I want you to pay attention. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, does not become weary or tired. How many of you are thankful that God doesn't become weary? How many of you are thankful that the next time you go whining to God, he's not like, oh, Lord, here they come again? I wonder what God does. How many of you all walk around going, oh, God, oh, Lord, what does God do? Oh, wait, who do I say something to? I'm just kidding. Come on. <laughs> the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired his understanding is unscrutable. His understand Listen, he understands what you're going through. Jesus went through every temptation you will ever go through. And he overcame. That's something that we need to understand. Jesus went through it and he overcame it. Watch this. And he lives in you. And the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is alive in you. Which means what? I can overcome. How many of you know you can overcome? It doesn't matter the situation. You can overcome. But Jesus paid attention to the word. Jesus was in the word. He studied the word. 
So it says, verse 20, 29 says, He gives strength to the weary. To him who lacks might, he increases power. How many of you need strength? It says, He gives strength to the weary. To him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youth grow weary and tired, the vigorous man, the vigorous young man stumbles badly. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. How many of you need new strength? I just gave you the key on how to get new strength. So one of the keys I gave you last week was practice the word, right? So can I put you to the test right now? Put your Bibles down, put your pens down. He says, wait on the Lord. Let me give you the definition of wait first before we do this. The word wait means this. It means to wait. To look eagerly for, to linger. But when I got deeper into the Hebrew, this is what it means. It means binding together, twisting together. Ecclesiastic says this. If one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. So here's what's happening. When we learn to wait upon the Lord, there's us, there's God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, starting to twist together in our life. So we become one with him. And isn't that what Jesus prayed in John 17? Lord, make them one with us as you and I are one. So those who wait upon the Lord shall be twisted together with the Lord. Have you ever, have you ever seen a rope? What makes a rope so strong? What makes the rope strong? It's been twisted together. If you take an old lariat, how many of you know what a lariat is? The rope that cowboys use to rope a cow? If you take one of those ropes and you cut the end, there's three pieces of rope that they've twisted together. And you can, un and you can untwist that rope. But when that rope is twisted together, you can't break that rope. So they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who are twisted together with the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, I'm no longer weak because I've been made one with him. But we got to learn to be twisted together. How are we twisted together with the Lord? How are we twisted together with the Lord? Wait. We spend time with him. We're in the word. So I'm going to teach you really quick how to be strong in the Lord. Are you ready? Close your eyes. And I want you to think about the Lord. I want you to think about his strength and his power. Close your eyes. Everyone. And we're going to take a minute with no one saying a word, just thinking about the Lord. Ready?
with what you just did. You just allowed you and the Lord to be twisted together a little tighter. But let me ask you this. In the process of that, how many of you had to fight to keep your mind focused on God? How many of you had other thoughts trying to come in, trying to get in there? How many of you had, I wonder what I'm eating for lunch? <laughs> How many of you thought, i got to be at work tomorrow at what time? Listen, when we start doing that right there, it's a battle, it's a struggle. But the more you do it and you stayed focused on the word and stay focused on the Lord, a minute will go like that and you just twisted yourself with God. So when the enemy comes at you, you'll overcome. How many of you take time to do that every day? You know what I'm saying? That's why the church is weak. Because we don't wait upon the Lord to renew our strength. We don't take time to be quiet. Doesn't, doesn't Psalms say, be still? And know that I'm what? That I'm the Lord. Be still and know that I'm God. But we live in America where everything is instant. We want an instant oatmeal. We want an instant uh, potatoes. And we want an instant God. And God is not instant. And God wants us to learn how to wait upon him. That's why it's so important that we get into the word and we know 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 the word. Know the word. Because as I was setting, I did the, now I was, I, I had my eyes open because I was watching because I started watching at about 15 to 20 seconds and people are going, trying to keep their eyes closed. And within about 30 seconds, people are going, you know, <laughs> but that was a minute. And we have a hard time staying focused for the minute. And we have to develop that. We have to work. We have to be a doer of the word. And doing the word means meditate on the word. So that's what I was doing, was I was meditating on the fact that he's my refuge, that he's my strength, that he's my fortress, that he's my God, he's my protector. So those are the things that I meditated upon. Thank you, God. And as we were doing that, we were being twisted together with the Lord. And we're becoming stronger. Now we could go home now and, and, and your life will be better if you'll put that to practice. But I want to show you something else. Go to Nehemiah. Because not only does God give us strength, but God will also give us joy. How many of you need some joy? Now listen, it's not hard to get joy. Because the joy of the Lord is part of the fruit of the Spirit, right? And if the Spirit resides in you, then the manifestation of joy should be there. But because we battle between the flesh and the Spirit, then the joy keeps getting pushed down and we're looking for happiness rather than joy. I hear this all the time from people. I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Happy is an emotion and it will lie to you. Because you can be happy. If you're living for happiness, you can be happy, happy, happy. And one situation, you'll lose your happiness. And now you're grumpy, angry, mad, blowing up, whatever, whatever it is you do, you're there that quick. Because you're living off of happiness rather than joy. Because when you're living off of joy, situations, circumstances can't steal it from you. Because it is a fruit of the Spirit, not a tickle me, Elmo. Right? I mean, that's what we're... Have you ever, have you ever done that to a kid? To, a, to a, a small one who's grumpy and grouchy and... and you better quit being grouchy because if you don't, I'm going to tickle you. Anybody ever do that? You better quit being grouchy because if you don't quit, I'm going to tickle you. I'm going to get you. 
and they just keep being grouchy. And so what do you do? You go tickle them, and what's it do? It makes them laugh, and they're happy all of a sudden. We shouldn't be up and down like that. The joy of the Lord, you can't tickle in, and you can't tickle out. The joy of the Lord is constant. But you've got to learn how to walk in the joy of the Lord. So in Nehemiah chapter 8, and as I was looking at this and praying over this, I thought I'd read the whole chapter, but for sake of time, and I know some of your stomachs are growling, I won't read the whole chapter, but I'm going to tell you the story. Because then we've got to go over to the New Testament, because in the Old Covenant we established some things, but now we've got we've to pull it together by the New Covenant. In Nehemiah chapter 8, Ezra had come in and rebuilt the temple. Nehemiah had come in with the children of Israel and they had rebuilt the tabern or the walls. And now they're done building the walls. And in, in Nehemiah chapter 8, Ezra with a group of priests call the people together and they're standing there and Ezra begins to read the law of the Lord. The children of Israel had not done this for years. This was actually a festival time for them. It's called the Festival of Booths. It lasts seven days. And they hadn't done this in years, since probably since captivity, um, where Daniel was taken to Babylon and some were left in Israel. But this had gone on for years. No festival of celebrating. So they're reading the scripture, and as they're reading the scripture, the people get heavy-hearted because they're hearing the scriptures of you have to do this, you have to do this. They're hearing the law and they get heavy-hearted and they begin to cry and they begin to weep and the Bible says that they fall on their faces and they're weeping and Ezra stops them and says, no, 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 no. This is not what we're doing. This is not what the law should produce. This is not what the law should produce. The law should produce a strength. The word of the Lord should produce a strength inside of you. And then he says in Nehemiah chapter 8 and the last part of verse 10, he says this. Do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you get to a place in your life and you don't have joy, you better begin to look at or when you don't have strength, you need to find out where your joy is. You're not waiting upon the Lord. You're not allowing the Lord to produce that fruit of joy, and you're no longer strengthened. So, so, so Ezra said to them, you've got to stop. We can't do this. Get on your feet. This is a time of celebration, and we're going into seven days of celebrating. And that's what they did. They celebrated for seven days. They did nothing else but celebrated the law of the Lord. Now listen, church, that's all under the old covenant, and we now live under the new covenant. How much more should we be celebrating what the new covenant gives to us? Amen? So the joy of the Lord is our strength, and if you're lacking strength, then the joy is not producing inside of you what it's supposed to. So go over to 1 Thessalonians, because I want to show you a church that has all of the material or all of the circumstances to be in a place of hopelessness. But, but, because they understood the joy of the Lord, they never got there. The, 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 church, the church in Thessalonica was one of the churches that Paul started, but he was only there a short amount of time. He got the church started, he got it up and running, but they were still baby Christians. But because the the other cities came in, the other uh, Jewish people from other towns came there and started to attack Paul, he had to flee for his life. And it left the church without the leadership that they needed. But Paul took his, his leadership and they left, and as soon as he could, he sent Timothy back. And then Timothy came back to Paul because what Paul was, was concerned about was that the church would fall apart and they wouldn't stand strong. But what, Tim, what Timothy came back with, this message, I want you to look in Thessalonians chapter 1. And uh, we're going to start in verse 6 because here's what it says. You also became imitators of us 
and of the Lord. How could they become an imitator of the Lord unless they read up about the Lord? Right? You can't imitate something you don't know. How many of you know that? You can't imitate it if you don't know it. He said, you became imitators of us and the Lord, having received the word of the Lord in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. They were in tribulation. Now listen, they, Paul and the leadership were attacked and had to flee, but the church had to stay there. They're in great tribulation, but in the middle of the tribulation, they found themselves in the word, and because they were in the word, the joy of the Lord by the Holy Spirit came upon them and strengthened them, and they were able to carry on. Now look at the rest of the verses here. So, so verse 6 says, You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word of the Lord in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 7. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. Now watch this. This is a church that's, that's barely able to stand. Because they're brand new. But because they, they, they chose to receive the word, they chose to take the word in and act upon the word and be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, the Holy Spirit was able to, to cause a joy of the Lord to flow up inside of them and the joy of the Lord gave them strength to overcome every tribulation. Go ahead. Amen, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Look at verse 8. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place your faith towards God, is, towards God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. Paul's writing to the church. Every other church that Paul wrote to, he wrote to them and had to correct them on things. And the only thing that Paul that he wrote to them about, and watch what it says, so that we have no need to say anything, for they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to... And to... What's it say? Come on, what does it say? And to what? For, the, for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. That is Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So Paul, he just had to write to him and say, look, you're doing great. Look what's going on in your life. You learn to take the word inside of you. You learn to wait upon the Lord. And every time you waited upon the Lord, that rope just got a little bit tighter, a little bit secure. You became stronger because it was no longer you functioning on your own, but you were functioning through the power of the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Lord rose up inside of you. And you have the strength to carry on in the middle of tribulation. And it's a young church that has no leadership. So it doesn't matter what kind of a church we're involved in. They can have good leadership, bad leadership, no leadership. If we make the decision that I'm going to plant myself into the word and I'm going to study it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to apply it, I'm going to meditate on it, I'm going to be in the word, then God will take you and he will carry you through to overcoming power every time. You can walk over every situation and be an overcomer, and you don't have to manage it. I don't have to manage this. I don't, oh, I got to put this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, and man, I got to do this. And how many of you have ever uh, robbed Peter to pay Paul? Anybody ever heard that saying? How many of you ever did that? I had to take money from here to pay here. <laughs> Nobody ever did that? Just three or four of you? How many of you are still doing it? See, we don't have to do that anymore because we're learning that, God, you are my strength. You are my source. I'm in your word. I understand you. I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in overcoming ability. And you will see me through every time. And the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. So we have principles that we have to follow. We have principles that we have to attain to. We have to put in our life. We have to walk through. 
And when we do, we will overcome. Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm more excited than you, I promise you. Wow. So, so here's my question. How many of you want to be an overcomer? And affect your city. Now watch this. The church at Thessalonica not only became an overcomer, they affected their city. And not only their city, but the regions around them. They affected their city. Now I'm going to tell you something about Abundant Life Church. Okay? I've only been here almost three years. Some of you have been here five years, ten years, twelve years, sixty years. Some of you have been here a long time. And Abundant Life Church has gone through a lot. It's gone through its good times. It's gone through its bad times. It's done this. But let me tell you what God is saying about Abundant Life Church. He has not given up on us. He's not given up on this place. He's not given up on this neighborhood. He loves this place. He loves this neighborhood. And he's waiting on us to say, I'm going to become victorious. I hear constantly... When, when I'm out in Enid, I, w- I was at a baseball or a softball game the other night, and I'm standing there talking, and somebody said to me, what church do you pastor? And I said, Abundant Life Church. And they went, I used to go to that church as a little girl. My grandparents went to that church. And I said, why don't you come back? Oh, well, they're in another church, and they're, they're planted there. And, and she looked at her husband and said, we need to go visit there. We just need to go. This church in this city, had a name at one time. But something happened that caused this church to go through a very rough time and took it to the bottom. We've hit bottom, and God has taken us back up. And this church will again be an effective, powerful voice in this city. But only if you as the church Dig into the word and know the word and apply the word and become a doer of the word and begin to walk in the strength and the joy of the Lord. So my question is this, for this body, how many of you will take on that challenge? If that's you, stand up. Now, I don't want you to stand up if you won't take that challenge. Don't be a poser. Don't be a liar. If you won't take that church challenge, stay seated. But if you'll take that challenge, I want you to stand. Because I want God to do something in this city. And with you standing, you are putting yourself in agreement with the leadership of this church, with the word, and with the Lord, that I'm going to become effective for the kingdom of God. Now, join hands. Just reach across, grab people's hands. If you're watching online, you were part of this. Grab hands with somebody. And if nobody else is in that room, do this. Grab hands as an act of faith. I'm grabbing hands because I believe that God has made me part of this church. Not only here in this sanctuary, but online. You may be living in Philadelphia, but if God's called you to be part, you're part. So we're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe, Lord, that you have called us to a new day, a new dawn in this house. Lord, you built this house in the beginning, and I do not believe you've ever taken the candlestick away. And I believe, God, you've given us a purpose, and I believe you've given us a message, and I believe, God, that you've given us a direction. And, Father, we want to be like the church in Thessalonica where we go, Lord, and even through every tribulation, we stand firm, we stand in the word, and we stand strong, full of the joy of the Lord. Father, help us. To not just be hearers of the word, but to become doers of the word. Help us today, Father, as we lock hands with each other and put ourselves in agreement. Lord, I gave them opportunity not to do this, but they've done it. And as they grab hands, as they stand, we're in agreement today, Father. And we're going to hold each other in agreement that we're going to be in the word. We're going to study the word, do the word, hear the word, meditate on the word, apply the word. We're going to rejoice in you. We're going to open our mouth and declare the word. 
And Father, I thank you that by the word of our testimony, we are overcomers. I thank you, God, that by the blood of the Lamb, that we're overcomers. I thank you that through the cross, Lord, we're an overcomer. I thank you, Father, that your word is planted inside of our heart. And Father, you plant it there. Your word says that I hide thy word in your heart that I might not sin against you. That your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Lord, I thank you that your word is strong in our heart and we're growing daily. Lord, we, we, are, we are attaining to the word. We're purposefully putting ourselves and paying attention to the word, Lord. Hearing it, reading it, meditating on it, studying it. And Father, I thank you that your word will never return void. And what you want to accomplish in this city, in this neighborhood you will accomplish. And Father, we make commitment to you today, to each other, that our hearts are joined together and we are ready to run the race. And Lord, we are ready to be part of this place. And Lord, we're going to do what you've called us to do. And Lord, no matter what comes, no matter what happens, we're locked in. This is where God's called them, these people to not only these, but others that are coming. People that are moving here. Lord, you gave me a word just recently that somebody from Chile is getting ready to move here to be part of this place. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you, God. That there are things that are stirring up. And Lord, in this house, in Spanish and English, you are giving us a hunger for the word. And I thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, that we're no longer looking for happiness. We're no longer looking for emotional uh, fill. But we're looking to be filled up with the Spirit of God. That the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. That we can walk in peace. That the love of God flows out of us. That we're gentle, Lord. That we're long-suffering. That we're kind. Lord, I thank you that the fruit of the Spirit is manifesting inside of us. Because the word of the Lord abides in us. Because the word abides in us, then the spirit of God lives strong inside of us. Father, I thank you for it today. I give you praise. Now, take a minute and pray for the person you're holding hands with. Don't let go of their hands. Pray with them. You pray for them. Don't say, I don't know how to pray. Step out and do something you've not done before. Pray for that person. Open your mouth and pray out loud where they can hear you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We honor you today, God. We give you glory. We magnify you. You are holy. You are awesome. Thank you, God. I thank you that you're blessing each person, challenging them, equipping them, Father. causing a hunger to rise up for the word. Thank you, God. Thank you. These people are saved, God. Every name represented up here is saved. Praise you for it. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I exalt you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you're watching online, pray for the person that you're believing to be saved. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are sick in body. I pray for Barbara, Lord. You know that they replaced her knee, and Lord, her knee split back open. And I pray over her right now, God, that that, and Lord, she's going back into surgery Tuesday. I pray for complete healing over that knee in Jesus' name. Just as you touched Al's knee, just as you've touched Carol's knee, we pray over Barbara that her knee is healed in Jesus' name. Lord, there are others that are homesick today. I pray healing into their bodies. I give you praise and glory and honor. And now, Lord, I send your church into the streets to be the church. To open their mouth and declare the glories of the Lord. To shine, to be the lighthouse in their neighborhood. We send them to the streets, Lord, to be Jesus. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Go be the church. Amen.
From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea.